Well, good evening, everyone. I'm going to ask you to stand up to your feet. So the Word of God says to always praise God in all things and all circumstances, to give thanks unto Him, whether good or bad, because we know that He is able to make all things work out for the good of those who love Him and who are called according to His purpose. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you tonight that you're with us. We want to thank you for your goodness. Father, we want to thank you and give thanks and rejoice and praise in all circumstances and at all times. Lord, because you are good and you are on the throne. So be in our praise tonight in Jesus' name. And we all agree and say, amen. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. 
Jesus, and I praise the name of 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 Jesus. Come on, the Word of God says that no weapon has formed against us will prosper. And the Word of God says that everything that the enemy means for evil, God turns it around for good. Amen. That's why we praise Him, because in all situations and all circumstances, He is worthy. I come out of agreement with the lie that you have left me on my
sing no weapon, no worry. No weapon, no worry will prosper against me. No darkness, no evil will tease or torment me. No weapon, no worry will prosper against me. No darkness, no evil will tease or torment me. All power, dominion to one name is given. My fortress, my freedom, my refuge, my Jesus. All power, dominion to one name is given. My fortress, my freedom, my refuge, my Jesus. Protector. covering my song in the night protector you're our protector here comes the glory of the Lord here comes the glory of the Lord Sweeping in the room. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Sweeping in the room. Come on, lift your voice up and sing, Here comes the glory. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Jeremy, I don't think you realize how prophetic those three songs were that you just chained together. So we are raising a hallelujah because of the victory that just happened in the Senate. And in case you didn't hear, Joe Manchin turned sword against the Democrats and stopped the codification of abortion. So there is, we're now a, we're raising a hallelujah because a protector has been put in place so that the glory of the Lord 
can come to the nation. <laughs> Got it? So, Father, we lift up Senator Manchin in front of you tonight. We ask for a hedge of protection around him, that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against him, you will silence, Lord. And we pray for a continued turning in the nation of Roe versus Wade, Lord. In the 49th year, going into the 50th year of Jubilee, we decree and declare victory over this demonic entity called Baal, Lord. We, Lord, tear it down in the name of Jesus, Lord. And, Lord, we pray tonight that you would protect him, Lord, and protect every Supreme Court justice, Lord, as they stand in the righteousness that you have given them, Lord. And, Lord, we pray, we ask and pray that this would be, Lord, the, the trampoline or the, the, the starting and stepping point, Lord, for revival that comes, Lord. Heal our land. Forgive our sin, Lord. 50, 49 years of shedding of innocent blood. We ask, Lord, for your mercy and your grace, Lord. If you were fair and just, you owe Sodom and Gomorrah uh, 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 an apology, Lord. So tonight, Lord, we're asking for this move of righteousness to continue for the exposure of corruption and criminals, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're tearing the veil, Lord, and you are concealing the things, you are revealing the things that are being concealed. So, Father, we ask for a continued unveiling of unrighteousness, infused with your glory and your righteousness, Lord, that the Christians would stand firm and stand in faith and take a stand. And above all, when we've done all, Lord, in Ephesians chapter 6, stand. And, Lord, we stand on your word and in the power of your spirit, Lord. We're grateful, Lord, for the shift we're sensing in the nation, Lord. Continue to shift it, continue to shake it, and continue to sift it, Lord. And so the only thing that remains, Lord, according to Hebrews chapter 12, is of you. So, Lord, shake everything that needs to be shaken. Shake Dover, shake Washington, shake everything that needs to be shaken, Lord. We promise, Lord, we'll stand with you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we ask this. And all God's people said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn around and greet a few people. There's a reason to have a hallelujah in your spirit tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, there's victory in the camp today. Hallelujah. It's about time we're winning some things. It's tired of taking a beating. But Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of Angels' Armies. So praise God. So good to see you tonight. Praise God. Everybody's coming out. We're uh, in our study on Romans chapter 8, victory. And a couple of announcements, just one really, maybe two. Uh, Hope Day is coming up. A lot of people registered on Sunday and this week, so we're very grateful. We're moving close to 50 volunteers, and we're getting a core number of us to be able to uh, uh, move forward and uh, execute Hope Day. And, of course, there's a sign-up, and those are the areas that you could sign up uh, and we're, we're moving right along, so we're excited about that. And uh, God is good, amen? So thank you for your prayerful consideration. Uh, I have some ice cream out in the lobby when we're done as a little treat for you tonight. We celebrate the victory. Uh, um, and then Sunday, we're going to have an ice cream fundraiser for the youth uh, for their trip. They're going, uh, they're going to summer camp, and we usually be able to raise a couple dollars for traveling things and you know the sec if a, if a family has two kids we try to give the second one half price and then raise a couple of bucks to be a blessing to that family so they don't have to pay the full expense just this something we've done and and if they can't afford it we usually help them anyway but we try to just be a little proactive and offset the cost and then you know bring up a little spending money so we could have pizza or splurge with them so they will enjoy themselves to the fullest as you could see in We've spent uh, uh, about $13,000 on a bus, 
uh, because of your faithfulness in your area of tithes and offerings and giving. Uh, we think it was time to move forward and to have a vehicle that we can go up and down to the Dream Center with and do all various uh, trips for the youth, young adults, and then also we usually like to take uh, the seniors or whoever to Sight and Sound. So we'll be working on a Sight and Sound trip uh, to see David soon. So we're working on that. So again, with the bus and the vans, uh, it gives us enough bandwidth to operate at a different level. So we're grateful. I'm grateful for your faithful support that enables us to do these things. Um, next move, we're going to uh, maybe by the fall raise money for a box truck for the Dream Center. We need a box truck. We're at that level now where we need a box truck, an 18-foot box truck with a lift gate. That'll be about $54,000, but God is faithful. Uh, we, we have some grants moving here and about, so we can offset uh, some of the costs with some grants, and God is faithful. He's brought us this far. He's not going to let us down. Amen? So we're in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. We are doing uh, Victory Over Sadness, uh, part B. I'll do a quick synopsis after I read Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28 through 32. Uh, and this is one of my favorite scriptures. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. There's a condition there. Uh, to those who are the called according to his purpose. If you're operating in the covenant, right? 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined. We talked about that last week extensively. He also predestined pro oritio to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, moreover, whom he pro orizioed, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified been made in right standing, and whom he justified, made in right standing, these he also glorified, which is our final destination, glorification. So we have uh, salvation, right? Justification by faith. We have sanctification, and then we have glorification when we leave this place. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, uh, God's everlasting love, verse 31 and what do we say? Uh, yeah. What what then shall we say to these things? I need my glasses. I'm sorry. I'm trying to cheat without them. What then shall we say to these things? For if God is for us, who can be against us? Praise the Lord. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not not with him also freely give us all things? So. So we're at page one of your handout, and uh, I'll, there's a quick synopsis on page one. We talked about victory over sin about halfway down the page in Romans 8.1. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, uh, and, uh, and I can have victory over sin. I don't have to be condemned. Yes, I'll make mistakes. I don't have to beat myself up because... We are all, the Bible says, Romans 3.23, we're all sinners saved by his grace. And once I'm born again, it doesn't mean I'm not going to sin. But I, I am to have victory over sin where it doesn't rule me the way it used to rule. I might trip up and start, you know, make a mistake here and there and, you know, have a slip of the tongue and, you know, get a bad attitude and, and you know, just to have a bad day. But I don't stay... Uh, in that place of perpetual sin, I recognize it, it grieves me, and oh, I can't do that again, right? So you, you just, you don't beat yourself up, there's just no condemnation for those that are in Christ. That's a trick of the devil to keep you under condemnation. So victory over sin, then Romans 8, 5 through 17, victory over self, which is the flesh. Look, we're all in the flesh. We all have this body, soul, and spirit. Your body is the container, Paul said. It's a vessel. Your soul is your mind, your thought life, your will, the choices you make, and your emotions. I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm up, I'm down, I'm all around, sometimes like a roller coaster. But if I'm ruled by my soul, we've got to be careful. And then the spirit is the third component. What we want to do is be governed or ruled by the spirit. 
When you rent a U-Haul truck, it only goes 55 degrees because they put a mechanism on the bottom of it. It's called a governor, right, Rich? A governor. It only allows you to go to 55, and it stops you. So the Holy Spirit is our internal governor that if we tap into that, um, I'm not saying sin less, but I will sin less, right? Because sometimes uh, my operating system is not the word of God. It's the flesh, and we're all battling the flesh, and we we'll, all will battle the flesh until we leave here or hopefully master it to get it down to where it has no influence or dominion. Thank you, Nancy. No dominion. Uh, then we looked at uh, victory over suffering, Romans 8, 18 to 27. On page 2, um, well, we talked about suffering is a part of life, but we have the helper who's the Holy Spirit. And one thing I love about our church is that we are Scripture-fed, Spirit-led. Scripture-fed, Spirit-led. Uh, my, my friends used to say, if you just have the Word, you'll dry up. If you just have the spirit, you'll blow up. But if you have some of the word and some of the spirit, you'll grow up. Amen? So we love, uh, I took biblical hermeneutics in college, which is Bible interpretation. And I took Greek and Hebrew. So I consider myself like a Baptocostal, if there's such a thing. Uh, I love the word. I'm a student of the word. But I'm full of the Holy Ghost, and I'll cast the demons out of any of those people that cause trouble. Hallelujah. Right? I told you about my water pistol on Sunday. My Nerf, uh, what is it? Super soaker. Now I put holy water in it. Now I added anointing oil. So it's going to stick to them. Anyway, that's a Deliverance Ministry 301. That's why we took those 37 courses in Deliverance Ministry. And then we talked about victory over sadness. And that's where we were in Romans 8, 28. We know, uh, we know uh, that in all things, God works together. Uh, so we talked about in the bottom of page two, supernatural resources to overcome sadness in our lives. We have a promise. And what is the promise? A promise of assurance that, listen, I'm going to go through some stuff, but I'm a child of God. I'm in covenant with him. And yet there'll be times where I'm going to scrape my knee. Maybe I'm the cause of it. Maybe the devil's the cause of it. Maybe it's just circumstantial. My boss is a jerk. The spirit of smack comes over me. You know, I, I, I want to, bad things happen, right? Because I'm being tormented by the enemy. So, but I have a promise of God's going to work it all out. And I've got dozens of testimonies of people where it was a bad situation and God made a way where there was no way. Because really, they put their hope and their trust in Christ. And they trusted him. They verbalized it. They said, Lord, whatever thy will is, thy will be done. If you want me to stand la boca, Nancy, I'll stop my mouth. He's saying in Italian, statachi. Right? Yeah. You went through that too? Yeah. Sometimes you got to bite your tongue. Sometimes you got to speak the truth in love. But you need to have spiritual discernment about what to do under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you have a promise of assurance that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you, and God will work it out. And in all things, not some things, in all things, in our finances, our friendships, our relationships, in every aspect of life, um, in every struggle. And so when we went to page four, we, we said that we not only have a, a promise of assurance, but in the middle of page four, the promise, uh, this is a promise that continues. God doesn't say, well, I promise up until this date. The promise doesn't have an expiration date on it. All right? Why? Because we're children. God is a covenant-keeping God. Some, someday I would probably love to do a Bible study to take you through the seven covenants. You know, the covenant he made with Adam, the covenant he made with Noah, the covenant he made with Moses, the covenant he made with David, and the covenant, the new covenant we have in Christ there's a couple of other ones that people say are strewn in there, but they're very interesting. Some are conditional. If you, I will, Deuteronomy 28. Some are conditional. Uh, some are not. Um, the new covenant is, is based on the relationship with Christ. Once you come into the family, Ephesians 1, you're adopted. You get, you're an heir to the throne. You have everything the Father has for you as a child. It's open to you. 
it may not, God may not want that for you. That's what the tricky part is, right? I may not get the jet plane or the elevator in my house. I'm not what I'm looking for. And that's not what I'm looking for. You know, a simple jet skis will do. But you, you got my point. Not, not everybody, God will determine the breadth, the length, the width of what he decides he's going to bless us with. So the promise, it continues. We talked about the word synergisimos, when we're synced together. Like, uh, you know, you sync your iPhone to your computer to update it. Um, synergisimos means to create, to replace, to interrelate, to forge, to move, to guide, to eliminate, to connect, to press, to influence, to stretch, to shape or stretch, to control or arrange. The Christian life is not an event. It's a process. Please understand. It's a process. Sanctify See, they lied to me. They said, give your life to Christ and everything's going to be glorious. Uh-uh. I ran to the altar. Hallelujah. I did a triple somersault like it was the, 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 the front of the line to the buffet. And I got there and I was like, praise the Lord. Two weeks later, my whole family turned on me. My boss turned on me. I was born again. I'm like, they called me a holy roller, a Jesus freak. So I started playing Toby Mac, Jesus freak. As loud as I can play it, what will people think when they hear that I'm a Jesus freak? You want to call me a Jesus freak? I'll be a Jesus freak. Now it's really annoying them. My spiritual father was like, Chris, this is not how you should be acting. And so, but I said, Jerry, they told me that I'm going to get born again and praise the Lord and showers of blessing and born again. He goes, no, nah, you just bought the bullseye. You got born again, and now the real battle starts. And now you're in the kingdom, and now you're, you're battling, you know, the satanic, demonic influences. We're, we're, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So I thought that was the answer to all my questions, and it was just the beginning of the process, not an event. The event was great. I'm born again. I have this awesome relationship with God. That romance stage wore off. Praise the Lord. I was going down to, uh, I used to go down to the beach, right, with Snooky. Now I was going to, uh, um, where, where is it down in New Jersey? Exit 33 off the parkway. Um, the Great Auditorium. Come on, Trevelyn, help me out. Jersey girl, help me out. The great, right, the great auditorium. <sighs> well, it's on, the great auditorium's on the beach, Christian events every year. Went down there, saw Michael W. Smith with the breeze blowing off the ocean, singing praises to the Lord. I was in heaven. Went down later on, saw the newsboys, 5,000 people, ocean salt air blowing in. Praise in the Lord, presence of the Lord so thick you could cut it with an ocean grove. Praise the Lord, ocean grove. Water baptisms the next day in the ocean. Me and the whole crew, water baptized, fighting 10 foot waves, just spitting out the salt water. Who cares? You know, and praise in the Lord, the fun festivals on the beach. Well, I was, used to be a sinner, but now God was forming me into a saint. But total transformation. And God was sinking me to his plan, but I had to follow him each step of the way. So it was a journey. It still is a journey. That's not saying I, I didn't have any problems in life, but that's Romans 8, 28. God worked the things all to, out together for the good. Then we looked on the bottom of page 5 about Joseph. And uh, top of page 6, more about Joseph. Top of page 7, I'm going to start from here. Um, God's truth is simple. Top of page 7, I have a plan for your life. We talked about the Greek word pro orizio, towards your horizon. Once you're in Christ, he points you towards your horizon. That Hebrew word in Jeremiah 29, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you for a hope and a future. That Hebrew word future is akarit. We talked about that in Hebrew. What is behind you is what is ahead of you. It's a picture of a Hebrew man rowing into his destiny with what is behind him is actually what is ahead of him. So in Hebrew, all the words, 
correlate to numbers. That's, that's called gematria. And all the, all the words correlate to pictures. So it's you study Hebrew, which is God's language. You'll probably learn it when you get to heaven, maybe. And so, you, you know, there's just layers of biblical interpretation in, in Hebrew. So uh, God has a plan. You're not an accident. Your life is not one of blind faith. Well, whatever happens, happens. That's not true. Your life is not based on luck. I, I don't read the horoscope because I read the Bible because his promises are yes and amen. God wants us to know that he has a plan for our life. So we have a promise of assurance, a promise that continues, and number three, the promise of blessing. And we know that all things God works together for the good. It may have a little pain right now, but good is going to come out of it. How uh, We like the word good. Good means the ultimate good for my life. Uh, not good like the Rangers winning tonight. That would be good. But I'm not, thanks, Bob. I'm not counting on it the way we've been playing. But anyway, it's, it's, it's all good. Win, lose, or draw. I'm not going to lose sleep over it, right? So um, not spend it, not something that is good for the flesh, that makes me happy for a minute, good that is permanent and eternal in my life. Uh, that's where we stopped off at, but I'm going to continue as a Christian I have a promise of blessing from God. When you go through something, you can't see beyond right now sometimes. Uh, we can't see what's around the corner. Uh, we do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. We see an event but not, cannot see the purpose in the event, the pain in life. But God's, God sees what is happening today and how it will work together for good in my life tomorrow and down the road. When I had my floor covering business, and I sensed the writing was on the wall, and the floor covering industry was changing, and I was losing major corporate accounts on the waterfront in Jersey City, and with the housing authority in Bayonne and the Board of Ed, I was like, this is not good. But at the same time, God began to open up the door in ministry. Hey, we were looking for an assistant pastor. We could take you on part time. Hmm transition began to happen and the pain over here was eased by God nudging me into the place where he wanted me to go without having to twist my arm behind my back and you know synergizing synergizing me with him I was quick to read the writing on the wall because I really want to hand God the paintbrush and tell him Lord I'm a canvas you paint the picture that you want you paint and that's tough because, you know, I have a plan. But God's plan overruled my life, right? So he worked all things out, even with Denise, when we had to sell her physical therapy practice, 26 years. Started it in Brooklyn, Staten Island, her own facility. Had uh, two, two physical therapists, one occupational therapist, one speech therapist. Things were booming until Emperor Bloomberg took over. And he began to scale back the contracts one by one by one by one by one. Oh, we're broke. Please, you're not broke. $93 million budget. But they just begin to redo things to make it done in-house in the public school system. And the writing was on the wall. And I was like, Lord, you got to have a talk with my wife. Because I see it, the pain of having to transition and let go from one career into another career, as anybody knows, is, is a challenge. And you really want to grab a hold of the H-E-M, of the H-I-M, and say, Lord, I'm transitioning into a new phase. I don't see the whole thing, but I got a hold of you. Be a light and a lamp for my path. And we trusted him, and it all worked out. She came here. She got her license here. And the pain uh, that was being infused in the Board of Ed here, he was even worse than Emperor Bloomberg. So she's like, I don't want to do this no more. I want to come to work in the church. And at the time, the church in 2017 was starting to grow, and we had a need, and Bob and I and Wayne and the board came into agreement, this is the direction we're going to go, and she's going to take over the kids' church and this and that. Women's group added office, oversight of the office, and everything else that comes with it. So that was the transition that brought her. But God worked it all out. 
I, I didn't know how he was going to do it, but he did it, and there was a trust. But there was a closeness to him that Denise and I had to have, and we're going to talk about that on Sunday. Is going to be our opening sermon in the discipleship series, and it's going to be called The Closeness of a Disciple. And I'm going to take you through four verbs with the disciple John. We see John leaning, we see John standing, we see John running, and we see John following. What does that mean in your life? All of them will get you closer to Jesus. And that's what this is all about, getting closer to Christ. Or having him play a, play a role in your life, having that relationship. So, as a Christian, I have a promise of blessing from God. We did that. And the bottom, the rest, rest, rest in this promise. That's the tough part. Rest, trust me. God is good because God takes all the events in our lives and works them out for our best interest. Remember what Joseph said in Genesis 50, 20 to his brothers. You meant it for evil, but God worked it out for my good. Moses said in Deuteronomy 23, 5, God turned the curse into a blessing. Why? Because he loves you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I, now, uh, then I shall know fully, even as I'm fully known. The King James says, we see through a glass darkly. We don't see the whole picture, he's trying to say. You can't see clearly what's going on. Why is this happening? Why do I have to go through this? God's got it. He's got you and he's got it. Matter of fact, he's in you in the storm. That's how he could say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. We do not understand everything that's happening in our lives. We can only see things from our perspective and not God's perspective. I, I look at it like this. My friend worked on Wall Street, Chrissy, and uh, he brought me up to his office to see the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And it was so cool because up at his office on the 45th floor of whatever tower he was in, he worked for uh, Pershing, per Pershing, yeah, Pershing. And so from the 45th floor, I saw Charlie Brown and the Simpsons and all the whole parade from the, from the end to the beginning. I saw the whole picture. And he said to me, if we were down there on 34th Street, we would only see right what's right in front of us. And I thought, later on, I got a sermon out of that. From God's perspective, God sees your whole life. God's not in time. I know this is difficult to understand. He's not in time. He's in eternity. He, he sees your whole life from the end to the beginning. And if you mess up or screw up like I did, he could just redeem the time, Nancy. I, I messed up like 12 years of my life being out there drinking, carrying on, doing all this stuff. And all those 12 years I missed, once I came back to him, he's like, that's all right, Chris, I got you. He put me right back in the place where I should have been and redeemed all of the time. Amos says that the canker worm has stolen, the pomegranate has stolen. I was like, well, my friend's got houses, they're married. God said, I'll take care of that in 12 months. I was like, no way. Boom. Within 24 months, I had everything. How? He redeems the time. He's not in time. Our faithfulness activates the hand of God. And he's like, here, Chris. I give you a house, I give you a beautiful wife, I'll give you a car, I'll give you all this, I give you your own business. Man, I would like you to come to work for me when you're ready. I may believe I didn't hear that, but later on, he sort of directed my path, and I was like, yeah, because I was 12 years old. I walked out of my grandma's church on Newark Avenue, and I heard the Lord call me into ministry. And I got caught up in a vision, and I saw myself doing Holy Communion from the pulpit in my grandmother's church, right out in front of my, my grandmother's church, I was like, what was that? And I felt the Holy Spirit say, I'm calling you into ministry. And I was young. I was like, what do you call me to be a priest? Because I had priests on this side of the family and uh, pastors on this side of the family. So I was like, nah, I don't, I, I'll pass. I'll pass. So from 12 years old to 33, isn't that an interesting, to 33, I ran from the Lord until he got a hold of me at 33. But he redeemed all of that time in the 20s, that 10 years I wasted from 18 to like 33, more like 15 years. 
because he's faithful. And he's God all by himself. All right? So um, where are we at? Uh, God wants to bless his children. Um, I, there's a thing, you know, you got to understand you're blessable now because you're part of the family. This is a promise with a condition. And we know that in all things, God works together for the good to whom? For those that love God. I told you it was conditional and are called according to his purpose. There, there is a condition. God works out all things for the ultimate good for those who love God and are committed to his purpose or his will in their lives. All right? Now, Lord, I'm just going to do what you call me to do, and I'm going to remain close to you. I'm going to have my challenges, but I'm going to keep rowing the rowboat into my destiny, and you'll be faithful to talk to me if I need to be a left or a right. I need this person in my life. I need to get rid of that person. You'll let me know, and I'll be obedient. Right? The hard truth is God is only looking after all things for the person who loves God primarily first in their lives. He's not an ATM machine. You can't just keep making withdrawals because the account will go empty. You have to make deposits relationally, right? God is only, God is only working for those who are committed to his purpose and walks in obedience to his word. Has my walk been perfect? No, it still isn't perfect, right? But, he, you know, we, we all are very cognizant of not grieving the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's, sanct it's called sanctification. A lot of churches won't preach on it. Uh, you know, be ye holy. Try that down at the, at the laser light show down the block. See if you could talk about holiness in there. No, nah, they, won't, they won't preach on sin. They won't preach on holiness. It offends people. It makes people holy. It sets them free. The word doesn't return void. Don't be scared of it. Let, it, let, it, let the word have its due diligence to help set the person free. You're not helping them. You're hurting them. Plus, you're going to have to stand in front of the Lord. He's going to say, dude, why'd you water down my word? I was like, uh, I had all these blessings for you, Chris, but go plow the field for 10,000 years. <laughs> you know, too much is given, much is expected, right? And uh, I wouldn't stand up here and having to, my, my, my conscience and um, not, know the full counsel of God and not be able to give the full counsel of God because that's where the reward is for you, not for me. For the reward is the application to your life to see the fruitfulness in the hand of God and the blessing of God and say, this works. Yeah, it's been working for a long time. All you have to do is give application, right? The truth is, if I'm not placing my whole life in the hands of God, how can God bless me, take care of me, and help me? Uh, if I walk away from God and his promises and disobey and rebel against him, how can I expect that God is going to work things out? Let me bring this home. God will not force his will on Chris. He won't. He won't. He'll nudge me. He'll prod me. He may even get me in a little headlock, honestly. He'll corner me and put me in a little headlock, give me a noogie and say, hey, stupid, you better, you better wake up, right? And then you know and he starts poking you like, hey, Right? He will not force his will and care upon anyone that doesn't want it. He's a gentleman. He comes by invitation only. Right? God has no robots, and he does not force any one of us to surrender our walk to obedience with him. We can either surrender our lives totally or completely uh, and completely to the Lord in love, or we will take control of our lives. This morning, we have a promise, a resource. We have a promise. The number two is a process. So, I'll take you through a quick testimony. I feel like um, uh, this thing with money with God, when my spiritual father said, you know, you have to tithe. And I was like, what's that? And I was making like over $100,000 a year with my floor covering business. And I was thinking, well, it's like, like two grand a week. They tell me I got to give 200 bucks a week. I was like before taxes, are we having this whole conversation? So I remember the first time I was like, I had to write out the check. And, like, the devil's like, don't you do it. And I was like, shut up. Like, and it was like this spiritual battle going on. And I was like, shut up. Don't do it. Don't. That's not going to work. I was like, shut up. Like, you know, the energizer with the, you know, the, the two, two things on the shoulder. And I was like, yeah. I was like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust. Look at Jerry's life. I'm going to trust God. And I started tithing. And, boy, God started bringing major accounts in to my business. 
the waterfront in Jersey City, high rises, brand new high rise, Portofino. Well, this is after 9-11 when the entire Manhattan was moving to Jersey City. It was exploding downtown Jersey City. And I was the recipient of all the blessings. I, I had a, the business uh, expanded. Then I started to tithe exclusively on the business. I had a business tithe check and my tithe check. And then the Lord blessed me with a whole nother account in Bayonne, the whole uh, housing authority, like 18 different uh, buildings in the in the city of Bayonne, like an eighty thousand dollar account. Denise is like, "What in the world's going on?" I was like, "Blessing of the Lord is here." So in all that, Denise and I decided to do this big event in Bayonne called Pray Bayonne. We pulled together like eighteen churches. We we're going to have an event on the waterfront. We we're going to bring in a special guest speaker. We were going to prayer. Each church was going to prayer walk their community. Like there was, you know, lots of churches, but it was it was a decent sized town. So each church would prayer walk their community. We'd come back and have a big Christian festival. And so the the bottom line is this whole thing was going to cost like ten thousand dollars. And so I said to the Lord, "Oh well, <laughs> looks like we're not going to do that." He's like, "Why not? I don't have that money." He said, "You may want to look over in the bank account." I said, oh, that's, that's my money, Lord. He's like, Who's, whose money is that? I said, it's our money, Lord. He's like, say that again. And it was a, a two-week fight between me and the Lord. I'm like, I am not taking $10,000. I said, I'll tell you what, Lord. I had, I had Pepsi stock, stock and since I was a kid. I worked 10 years for Pepsi. And they would give us stock options. And I just left them in there, and it, it grew or whatever. So I had, I had a, you know, an exuberant amount of money in stock from Pepsi. So I said to Denise, I'm going to sell my Pepsi stock. It's going to be 10000 And the Lord, we, I just got to a big argument with him. I said, you know what? Da, 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 da. I said, I'll, I'll pick up the phone. I called Mellon Bank. I said, sell the stock. I got the check. You know, we... we, we Got everything we needed for the Christian festival. We 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 paid for it all out of pocket. Some churches gave a couple bucks, but uh, and then three weeks after that, I got a phone call from a kid I grew up with, uh, the the Catholic church down the block who has a school. The pipe burst on the third floor and flooded six classrooms, three and three. And so the priest called me up and he says, "Hey, Chris, you you doing floor covering? I heard. Can you come over and give me an estimate?" So I went over there took out my tape measure. They had to get VCT tile like we have in the basement here. And uh, I did the estimate. The adjuster came from the insurance company. And my estimate was $9,996. And so I said, oh, well, here's the estimate. This is, you know, everything. And, and the adjuster goes, oh, great. We had a budget of 10000 He said, so you, 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 can, you can have the job. I'll write you the check right now. Three weeks from the stock check, three weeks, God is my witness, three weeks later, God gave 9996 And I said to the Lord, you shorted me four bucks. You know what the Lord said to me? Transaction fee. <laughs> but that one moment in time changed my whole relationship with God. He would never have to... I'd never have a dialogue with him anymore over trust. Like, come on, Bob. When he said, go open up the Dream Center, we are like, it's going to be like, a lot of money. Oh, I've been here before. Are you sure you want this, Lord? Yeah, okay, let's do it. Bob, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Trust him. You get just done know the voice, right? And don't be reckless, but you have to trust him because he'll work out all things for good according to those that are called. Right? And all the time. So I, I thought you'd get it. That was a really big relationship building part in my life with the Lord in 2004. So that's uh, 18 years ago. So really early on, after I rededicated my life to the Lord, I was on fire for him. And uh, he's like, let me test this kid. Let me see if his walk and his talk matches. And so, you know, so the last 22 years, the Lord has always provided, has always been faithful, 
I've, you know, there have been times I had to eat peanut butter and jelly and soup. There have been times, and there have been times I wined and dined with kings and queens. You know, you know, and Frank Shelton always told me, if you minister to the prostitute, he'll bring you to the president. And I had the privilege of sitting on President Trump's prayer team when he was in office. And that was a group of about 150 pastors. I mean, we didn't go there, but there was a prayer call that we went on once a month, and we, we had intimate information to pray accordingly. So remember what I'm telling you. You minister to the prostitute, he'll bring you to the president, right? That's just a posture of humility. Number two, we have a process. What's God's purpose? For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many of the brothers. What's God's plan for your life? What's God doing in our lives? What is God doing in Parkview? God wants to make us more like Jesus. That's the sanctification, right? Now, remember what I told you, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is the manifestation or the proof of Christ in my life. That's, that's the presence of God causes me to be like Jesus. It comes out in the fruit. Now, the power of God has me not operate in, in, in the maturity, but the power of God, the Holy Spirit, comes over me to do the ministry. The fruit is for maturity. The power is for ministry. When you have the power, he anoints you and gives you, like Paul, apostolic game plans and strategies, Walt, to take the community and culture for Christ. And that's where you need the power to pull out the game plan. Acts chapter 2 all the way through Acts chapter 24. And that's, we want to be a book of Acts church, amen? But we need the power. Wait in Jerusalem before you get the power. Power to what? Be bold. Power to witness. Right? Power to face devils and demons. Read the Gospel of Mark. It's a complete deliverance ministry manual. All Jesus did was cast out demons. It's pa packed with action. He didn't have conversations with them. What can I do for you today? Can I help you? What's the problem? Get out, he said. In the name. Come out. He cast them out. He cast them out. Amen? God wants to make us more like Jesus. God's using everything in our lives to make us more like Jesus. God is using people that come into our lives. <laughs> Brother Cactus, right? We got guys we call Brother Cactus at the men's ministry, right, Bobby? Why we call him Brother Cactus? Because you have one encounter with him and you're like, bing, bing, ow, ow. You had an encounter with Brother Cactus. I'm sure you know a sister Cactus. And every time you have an encounter, you get poked, prodded, stung. God will work it out. Right? Jesus was rejected and all this other stuff, his beard pulled out. All this stuff was done to Jesus. And sometimes we're going to be the recipients of some challenges and God's watching how we react. That doesn't mean me and you pass every one of them. Amen? Amen? Everything in life is to make us more like Christ. There's an old chorus, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All that I ask is to be like him. And through life's journey from earth to glory, all I ask is to be like him. So we really, on ver page 10, do we really understand what we're asking when we sing those words? Do we really want to be like Jesus? Persecuted, rejected, crucified, deserted, pain, everything he went through. Why is it such a big deal to God that I become more like Christ? Verse 29, we see the word predestinate. It means to destine and appoint beforehand. The truth is God knows what it will take for me to become me to come to Christ. And God allows certain things in my life to give me an opportunity to accept him and to live for him. Uh, God allows situations, people, influences in my life to make me aware of his presence. God knows what I need to accept him and to live for him, to stay true to him, to follow him, to depend on him and trust him. God knows all these things before they even happen. God has a plan for my life and your life. God's process is for us to become more like Christ. Another word in Romans 8, 29 that deals with God's process is conformed. Conformed. It means the process 
the same likeness, to possess, I'm sorry, to possess the same likeness of Jesus. I need to understand that everything that happens to me in this life is to develop Christ in my life. That is a choice every one of us must make. How do I respond to the situations in life? God's plan to conform us, to mold us, shape us, change us to become more like Christ. It will only happen as I, one, respond, two, cooperate with God's will in my life. God will not force Chris to become more like Christ. I have to cooperate. But the reality is I have a lot of work to do to become more like him. Uh, God will have his way in our lives. We could take the hard way or the easy way. I tried the, my way. It didn't work. I can tell you that. The choice is up to each one of us. He that began a good work, I love that. He that began this whole thing in Chris uh, is faithful to see it to completion. He doesn't do a job half done like some contractors around here that I know. All of them? I don't know. No, no, it's like, what happened? I'll be back. You didn't complete it. God completes what he starts. All right? We're all in the process of becoming more like Christ. We have a promise. We have a process. And number three, we have a provision. Pastor, how do we become more like Jesus? How can we be all that God wants us to be in our real lives? How can we live in God's will and have victory? Well, what shall we say then? What is our response to all this that God's going to work it out? Well, if God is for us, my goodness, who can be against us? That is a powerful one. He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? How many love the verse of victory? Americans take this to believe. God is going to give me whatever I want, whenever I want. Now, no more problems, no more struggles. I'm going to have whatever I want. In fact, the anointing and the presence of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life attracts trouble. Why does it attract trouble? Because the devil hates it because he used to have it. He used to have it. He was the anointed cherub with favor. He lost it, and he's so angry that he lost it. When he sees it on you, it provokes him to jail. There's that deed. I'm going to get, get, get all those demons. And let's, let's see. See how it works? The anointing is, 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 is powerful, but the devil just despises it. Are you following me? I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just giving you the truth, right? You'll have struggles, and we're not going to have whatever we want. No, this is not a verse that is saying the provision is this. God gave his son, which is the greatest gift, and surely God will take care of all of the smaller things in my life. Today, God is my provider. God is my protector, right? God is a providing God. Verse 8, 32 of chapter 8, God will graciously give us all things. And we're going to get to the last two pages. I'll get through this. What will God give to me and you? God's provision is spiritual. Ephesians 1, 3, praise the, to be the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. We are blessed spiritually, number one. God has provided us with salvation, the covenant. He had provided access to him through Christ. We have a relationship with Christ. The Holy Spirit comes to live in me, to empower me to have victory over sin. There's the whole formula in a nutshell. If you do not experience spiritual provision, you'll miss out on all the other blessings. God's provision is material. There are sometimes, yes, he'll do a material blessing. Uh, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to what? His glorious riches by Christ Jesus. As a child of God, God promises to provide for us. He will meet all of my needs. He'll take care of my needs. He blesses me materially when he knows that I will use what he has given me for his glory. God provides my needs, sometimes not my wants. I want this. Now, you don't need that, Chris. If you're walking in obedience to God and his word, he will bless you materially. He'll take care of you. God's provision is eternal. We may not see things easy in this world, but 
we are eternal beings. We are going to be blessed for eternally, but not the sinner. As we know, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Number four, God's provision is available right now. This today, God wants to bless you. You do not earn it. You do not get it when you arrive. By faith, you receive the blessing of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect when you're on your knees. When you're weak, I'll make you strong. When you think you're strong and you could do it on your own, not a good place. If you're sad, discouraged, overwhelmed by life, I have good news. Jesus wants to bless you. Listen to God's word. Philippians 2, 13, for it is God who works in you and will to will and act according to his good purpose. Psalm 3, 3, you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. Isaiah 46, 4, even in your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and will carry you. I will sustain you and rescue you. De Deuteronomy 33, 27, the eternal God is your refuge. And underneath of you are his everlasting arms. Today, we have a God that wants us to live in victory. So you're carrying around the baggage of sadness, grief, pain, hurt, rejection, unforgiveness, discouragement, depression. Listen to God's wonderful provision. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to Jesus, all you at labor and heavy laden. He'll give you rest. He takes my, take my yoke, a yoke, I'm not talking about eggs, a yoke was a, a, a structure. They, they would put two ox in, and they would put it around their neck, and there would be a coupling in the middle, and the two oxes would pull the cart. That's called a yoke. They would yoke the two oxes together to plow the field. So Jesus says, let me get in the yoke with you and pull alongside of you. Don't try to do it on your own. You'll never be able to do it. It'll be too rough. My yoke is easy. This thing I put on you, it's going to be me and you, Chris. And we're going to pull this thing together. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we can have victory over sadness, hurt, and depression. Amen? That was good. Even I enjoyed that. All right. So let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight, Lord. I thank you that your blessings are yes and amen. I thank you for the goodness of your word, the richness and the depth of your word. I thank you that we can get together, break bread, uh, Lord, your word. And, Lord, it would strengthen us, uh, reveal just many, many, many different depths of the grace and the goodness of your character and nature. And, Father, I just thank you in advance, uh, again, for the things you're doing in our nation. Allow this trajectory of victory to stay, Lord, in, in, the, in the lane that it's going, Lord. Let us pray it through, as the old-timers used to say, Lord. Uh, bestow upon us your grace and your mercy your protection, and your provision. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to bless you all with ice.